yeah. things are gonna be tough. I'm coming from Iran, like everyone says that because they cannot commit it to this. <laughs> you just finished your mm -hmm. PhD. Yeah. So I want to ask you a couple of questions. So, why do you think someone should choose computational neuroscience now that you've finished? Why shouldn't? <laughs> no. <laughs> should. <laughs> But <laughs> yeah, um, because I think um, so. There are lots of things that um, you know you have curiosity about, mm. like I don't know, like things under oceans, like mm. things in a space, like mm. um, things like how the like the um, subatomic um, atomic you know uh, particles moves. Like it just like it just brings your own. Uh, curiosity like you can kind of own the, the question there mm. right so i think computational nor like at least neuroscience is one of them and for me like why computational neuroscience because i love i like to like find um like I, i i want to quantitize the things that we think it's a qualitative it's it's really enjoyable to see like measures for something that we think we cannot measure yeah right yeah, yeah. so for me that part was really interesting yeah. and thanks um, okay so i was also wondering like for you i know you're a really productive person like i know you work really hard and sometimes kind of crazy hours <laughs> yeah. um, but i was wondering like what does an average day for you look like and how do you stay so productive yeah. right? you know i i think it's just like it almost applies to everyone like mm. we don't work on a uniform distribution hours <laughs> right so like and then like like but some people have this like i don't know like as something like the Gaussian, you know average but for me like i think just like i have these sparks <laughs> so so it's just uh, like when we are talking about average it's kind of like i cannot say that in average but uh right. You know, like of, of course, I can take an average, but I mean, uh, then but the, then the hours gonna be so low, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm not gonna say how much. Yeah, yeah. But then the thing. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask you this, especially like because you're foreigner in a new country, right, and also a woman right? in science, and I kind of wanted to ask you, like, how is it to do it as a foreigner in the Netherlands? Do you think? Um, I think. In Netherlands, I was so lucky. Like yeah. I had some like um, unfortunate incidents. Mm. Like for example, my my first um, project I stopped um, in PhD. Uh, like in the first PhD I was doing here, mm. but then um, it was really easy. Like mm. it wasn't like um, I'm coming from Iran. Like really different culture and everything. Mm. But here I didn't feel um, that much of you know like cultural shock and everything. Like I was yeah. I mean like but I mean like this is a this is my personal experience right mm -hmm. like I, it yeah, cannot sure. be like um extended to everyone but i'm saying like this is a really safe environment like in academia like mm -hmm. everyone is really supportive they're really trying to help you and boost your you know like confidence like do that do this and if you don't know something people willing to help you and i think that's really important and um of course like moving from uh, like really different place to another you all you you should know like yeah. things gonna be tough yeah. right so there are lots of things that you you need to think about um mm. ahead but um like when i'm comparing myself to my other friends like they are living in a different di living in different countries i think i was lucky because in like mm. the places i was i was in netherlands like always i had these warm feelings of support like Yeah. And like looking back then on your PhD, because now you're a doctor, right? You just graduated. Oh my God. Um, looking back, like, do you think you would have done something different or if you could start again? Like, yeah. uh, not to start again, but <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, of course. I'm, I, I think like um, even like after six months, I was thinking, oh, okay, I could, I could do that different. <laughs> so, okay. So, um, There are like some details, like I was doing everything in MATLAB back then. Uh, so, yeah, I know it sounds really outdated. Yeah, yeah. I think the last time I touched MATLAB was three years ago, but I yeah. remember like the time I, I started my PhD, mm. like uh, I was, I had this experience with MATLAB for, mm. I don't know, 15 years. So yeah, so for me, it was really easy. And then when I started my first project, I could finish it, finish that like in three, four months. Mm. And then I started doing uh, Python, like, mm. and, Everyone uh, was saying back then, like, if you're expert in C++ and MATLAB, mm. Python gonna be so easy. So I thought it's just syntax. So I actually didn't um, didn't learn it, like didn't yeah. didn't 
uh, make time to you know look look at the the, the structure of these. Uh, language. So then I was just doing everything by try and error. So like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. it took me a long time to you know like avoid some mistakes, right. and uh, like I think it, it slowed me down a bit. But I mean like besides these these sort of things, I think um, I would have been more structured. So mm. like I like from the beginning, it, like this is the thing. I, I, I think everyone knows it's really difficult to stick to it. Yeah. Right? So like, sure. yeah. So I mean, like, um, you know, ha- you know, spend a little more time. You know, like when you are like um, coding, put everything on GitHub. You know, like have a good name. You know, like don't. You know, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I have some codes. It's yeah. like paper method section three three two two, yeah. and then new. You know, like those crazy names, and yeah. then. I like and I know everyone is saying that mm. and I think now that like I'm one of the people who, who says that I just realized everyone says that because they cannot commit it to this <laughs> they want to you know like find some people yeah, yeah they yeah. find some people to do that because it's yeah. perfect but I know it's really annoying but yeah. in the end when your project getting bigger and bigger and bigger mm. it's kind of uh occupying lots of your uh, you know process power yeah, yeah. like in your brain because you like you have to think about lots of things when you go back there you have to when you like after t- two months for example you you want to do something in your um you know like in your project it's not that easy mm. you know like we this is the problem we have yeah so <laughs> yeah no yeah for sure so like if you then would give advice to like new students if they want to enter this field and they come from a different background like you, right? Like, because you're also, you didn't start as a neuroscientist, right? Like, what would you say is important to learn or to to acquire to get into neuroscience and to, yeah. I think it's it's really depending on from what angle they, they want to enter, right? Mm. So I think for me, um, when I was looking back, like if I want if I knew like I'm I'm, I'm gonna you know do things in this field mm. I would um, I would study something more solid like math yeah, right, Beca- yeah because you know like it gives you more insights yeah. and um, yeah, a solid yeah, a re- yeah really solid foundation so yeah, because sure, you yeah. it also gives you some uh, sensation how to you know work later so yeah. I'm coming from engineering background we had enough uh, math but then it's not something like we are using everything for applications right so then like um i'm not really using that for uh, for the things i'm doing mm. but there was there was times that I, I was thinking you know if i had this knowledge in here i could have used that better like i like i already like i already know different kind of maths so i mean like i yeah, could exactly. have you yeah, know like exactly. i could have something yeah. like this yeah and um i think this is a i think we should spend more time on fundamental science yeah, yeah. from yeah. like from the bachelor and then in master and then when you it, then it's it's gonna get really easier when you're gonna mm. go to interdisciplinary project and yeah. this is uh, something I, I think this is really important because like in the beginning you still don't know you know what directions you want to go like mm. it, this is I'm just saying that because it it did apply to me because I changed my direction a lot. So I yeah I I studied electrical engineering uh, and during the my bachelor I did work on lasers and then mm. for master I was looking at integrated ice like integrated um, circuits so like yeah. high frequency ICs yeah. and then I also did something in uh, plasma physics and then uh, like uh, uh, like medical physics like mm. really different things mm. and then like neuroscience and then again AI reinforcement like lots of things like from with lo- lots of mm, different directions but then I was thinking like if I if I had a solid background in something mm. even chemistry I don't know even like physics <laughs> yeah, something yeah, like sure. this yeah. then like you could go further I'm mean, like yeah. I, just go math so yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, like, just math. Yeah, yeah, yeah 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 exactly yeah, yeah. so but yeah, I mean sure. It, it does help you like in future yeah. if you want to go to different directions yeah and, like I, I think this is important for right. uh, you know essay in science yeah for sure for sure <laughs> okay and then I want to ask a little bit more on your personal experience right so like you did your PhD you're finished um, like if you look back what was the most positive thing you think and what did you learn that's kind of not science related right during my PhD mm. um, I think, yeah, I think that the, the fact that, um, you know, during your PhD, you are spending so much time on uh, 
um, some projects and then the chance of meeting interesting people in terms of, you know, like they, they also working on the same project or something similar. You can meet lots of interesting people and like it gives you joy, you know, like, yeah, to, you know, to have some, like, you don't look, you know, <laughs> weird a bit. Because, you know, like, there are some people that they can understand why you're excited about this thing. Yeah, yeah. So that's, uh, like, share this excitement. Like, it's like, you are a football fan. Yeah. But for, uh, <laughs> yeah, but for your own team. So yeah. it's just, it, it, uh, it uh, makes you really happy. And then, I don't know, when people acknowledge your work, like, when you're randomly, in a, like, you're in a talk and randomly people, you know, like, cite you like it's it's yeah it's yeah. like wow yeah. you know like you, yeah. for a moment you feel like you feel really important but because mm. you know like we all know how you know science develop like yeah it's like a, a small breaks so people's yeah, exactly. work and then yeah. it feels suddenly you feel really big like oh i'm part of it like, i did something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so it just you know it's, it's gonna it doesn't mm. gonna last like you know, like it's gonna yeah. disappear for a second, but then you feel a bit yeah. important, like mm. you are part of this human, you know, uh, history yeah. of, you know, science. So I think that part, like it gives you, at least for me, it gave me um, personal satisfaction. Mm. And of course, I think like we all, I think most of us, when we are in science, we want to solve a puzzle, mm. right? So like this, this solving puzzle, like every time you solve a puzzle, it gives you a joy. And of course, this is like, this joy is different from like publishing a paper or, you know, like getting citations and those, even getting compliments from your supervisor. It's just, it's a really different pure joy. Yeah. So I think that that part is really like, it's really rewarding. Yeah. But I should say it's, it doesn't happen often. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. Sometimes you Genius. work like, I don't know, four weeks on your code and you yeah. cannot find the bug. And then yeah. you, you, you realize, ah, oh, okay, you know, like this is the reason. It's yeah. not a puzzle, it's not a real puzzle, but you still <laughs> feel, a jo feel joy, but then I, you feel also bad for yourself. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. so yeah, you have that. Yeah, true. So nice. Okay, so for the last thing I kind of want to ask you is like, of course, your future plans, Ray, because you're a full doctor now and you're very famous already. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do after and what are your big plans? So, um, as I know, I'm already at UCL, so I'm doing my postdoc. So, um, I think I was in science for a long time. I know I like to be a scientist. I, I, like, I like to say, you know, being scientist. <laughs> But um, I think it just, for me, the, the interesting thing is a project. So I want to have impact. I don't want to be like someone who does things and then because, you know, he sure he can. So um, I want to go to the direction that I can have impact. I'm like, uh, I'm not just talking about impact on society. I'm just talking about impact in science. So, right. yeah, so like, uh, of course, you know, like when you, you, when you are part of you know like scientific com community, you are gonna have impact on society. But I'm mm. just saying like I wanna uh, have more focus on that. Like mm. I wanna build up something there, and uh, yeah. you know scientific community. Yeah, so. create your own niche in science. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Community. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. Mm. Okay, Miriam, thank you. I will show also some footage of like Miriam's graduation day because it will was so nice and. Yes. Yeah, she's she was one of my partners, but like the, the the one who you know like walk Defend. ahead. Yeah, but yeah, no, but but walk yeah. ahead of. Me. But it used to be defending, you know. <gasps> yeah, 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 with the sword and everything. Yeah, no, no sword. yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, but it was really fun to have you as my partner. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Are you nervous? No, I'm really calm. You're calm. <laughs> Is it? No, 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 <laughs> I 
Are you ready to be a parent in Defending. Defending. Miriam's honor. <laughs> so, take your time. That's what she said. I'm a doctor from Robert University in Nijmegen. I would like to defend in public um, my dissertation entitled uh, An Exploration of Neurological Signature of Psychiatric Disorders. Okay, guys, thank you for joining and see you next time. Bye.